What's up? This your girl, Miss Twerksome, now known as Saturday. I just skipped class like I used to do. Y'all already know what the fuck going on. Shout out to the Progress Report. Let's go. The Progress Report. All right, what's going on? It's your girl, Lala Shepard. This is a new episode of Skipping Class presented by the Progress Report. And we got Miss Twerksome, a.k.a. Saturday in a building. How you feeling? I'm excited to be here. Thank you guys so much. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to have you. Uh, salute to you and your team, Tyler. Appreciate it. For sure. Shout out um, to Tyler. Absolutely. I mean, because one thing about it, like, you know, you definitely, like, was a big part of our culture. Um, I feel like every you know, person around our age group definitely was on MySpace, LimeWire, yeah. YouTube early and just seeing you do what you do. And um, I listened to a few of your interviews and I love how you think. So yeah. I love to, you know, I can't wait to talk to you. So first, uh, let the people know, where are you from? So I'm from Decatur, Illinois, but I've been in Atlanta. I normally say 15 years, but it's been over that now. So I've been in Atlanta for a while. The Midwest, I'm from the Midwest. How was it for you growing up there as a child? Well, if you're from there, then you know it's small in the Midwest. Like, everybody know everybody. Mm -hmm. um, my parents, they were known. So everything was, like, cool. My grandparents were there. Um, I had three older sisters. And then I got, my dad was a little whore. So then I got um, a lot of step <laughs> stepbrothers and sisters, um, okay. you know. So, yeah, it was cool. It's just that I was happy that my mom took us away from there because I felt like it was not a lot of opportunities. And we would have just been um, a part of society to me, like, if she didn't show us better. I feel that. Um, like, was it was it tough for you guys and or, you know, your siblings to want to leave? Because, you know, at that point, you already got friends, yeah. you know, family members. Was it tough? That's crazy that you said that because only me and my sister, my um, my older sister, which we only a year apart. Mm. So only me and Elle. My mom took me and Elle at first. Um, my older sisters didn't want to go. They was like, no, like our friends here. But like me and Elle, we didn't really have like a choice. But at the same time. I was happy that we didn't have a decision and we wasn't really too much attached to anybody besides my grandparents. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. No, my mom wanted to move at one point too, and I was just like, I'm not leaving my grandma. What? I'm not, I couldn't. But you know, because you know your grandma not going to leave. I, yeah. I feel like I my, she, my grandma will not travel. Like, she haven't came to see my house or anything. I've been owning my house for two years. She haven't came, but I'm like, she already told me she proud of me, so I don't take it personal. But, like, they stuck in their ways. Like, what? Like, I'm comfortable here. I got my couch. I got my food. Like, Facts. yeah, she's not traveling. At all. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what type of student were you? Um, What type of student was I? I used to cheat. I wish I didn't cheat in, like, um, <laughs> math. I, I feel like in, in my head I was real smart. You know what I'm saying? But, like, honestly, the only thing I was smart with was, like, math. And that's crazy because, you know, I got money. But I feel like that's why, because I understood financial literacy, like, early, like, young, I was good at math. But other than that, I won't tell my sister, but, like, she passed everything else better than me at, like, the last, you know, like, the last test that you take, like, at the end? Yeah. And that shit pissed me off. Like, she passed everything else was higher besides math. Wow. So, yeah, but she passed everything. So the type of student I was, we was popular, but we didn't really fuck with nobody. Like, I was the popular person who, like, sat with the kids who wasn't popular. Like, I would find somebody who, like, was just chill by themselves. Like, I didn't really like it. We used to get bullied because we didn't, we wasn't having sex yet, and we wasn't messing with a lot of people, so. Wow. Yeah. So it was a little weird, like, as a student, to be honest. But, like, 16, they put us in, like, a, um, what do you call that, like, alternative school? Yeah. So I didn't have to deal with that so much because we was known then. Got you. Okay. Wow. Because... Would you say, like, when, when y'all started making a name for yourselves, were y'all, like, 15 or what age? Yeah, exactly? so I was 15. I was the youngest. Yeah. I was 16. Um, and Betty was about to turn 17. So I, or Betty was 17. So it was, like, 15, 16, 17, because me and my sister are only a year apart. So, yeah, it was definitely weird um, when we did get known, because we just think we just shaking ass in the basement. You feel me? Got like, you. We didn't think it was that big until at the end they, like, um, we'd be walking around and they'd be, like, twerk team in the hallway. we like, what? And like I told you, I wasn't fucking yet. But then you got that butt on you, and then people think you fucking. Like, I mean, I ain't even popping this pussy yet. You feel me? So Thanks. it was shit like that. Like, just being bullied. My mom be like, have them pencils ready. Mm -hmm. You know about the sharpened pencils? No, but I mean, I can only imagine. Because you can't have weapons in school. You right. feel me? Okay. And it used to be like, this girl used to bully me every lunch break. And my teacher never used to say anything like, 
And, and no offense or nothing, but I think she she was in a different class. You feel me? But she would come to me every time, like, mm -hmm. trying to beat my ass. What's up, classmates? Are you an artist, producer, creator, entrepreneur, and you're looking to get more content and exposure? Check in with us at the Progress Report. In addition to that, we also offer promo packages. So if you want to get an interview or you want to get your product placed on the progress support, make sure y'all shoot us a DM or just email us at admin at tprmediagroup.com. So DM or email us today for your interview on the progress support. Let's go. The progress report. And I'm just like, damn. And my mom's like, had that pencil, that pencil sharpen. And you know, you just got, you got to have something to defend yourself. They used to be, yeah. Maybe, like, I feel like with bullies, you just never know. Maybe she liked you. I yeah. don't know. Maybe she did. You know? <laughs> Maybe she did. But, you know, like, that is true. Like, sometimes people do pick with you when they like you. Yeah. But I'm like, she could have just been my friend. Like, I never did nothing bad to her. I didn't understand it. That I didn't understand so crazy. it. crazy. Okay, and so from, you know, our perspective, like I, like I said, growing up in the Midwest in Ohio, yeah. our perception, we probably looking at you like, damn, she's super popular. We would have yeah. never guessed that you was going through that type of shit. It was because it was, like, we was, we came into high school, right? Mm -hmm. But we was, like, Kami and Kamaya little sisters. Like, so my sisters, they already made their mark. So yeah, when we came into high school, like our sisters, they already had made their mark. It's like, so it was Peaches and Nettie little sisters. I mean, like came and Kamaya little sisters. You know what I'm saying? We Peaches and Nettie. That's like our nicknames. So like they knew not to with us for real. Mm. Besides that girl that was in that class. <laughs> Did you ever have to use the pencils? No, we didn't. Okay, cool. Um, and I really wasn't a fighter yeah. until like, like really, really honestly until recently. I tapped into my Mortal Kombat, like I don't think people understand, like they, you really know how to fight, you just gotta tap into it. Like in my dreams, <laughs> crap, you doing all types of shit in my dreams. So wait, so recently you say you just learned, or just tapped into I it. I tapped into it. What was you, why was you thinking? Um, see, there you go. There you go, some shit. Okay, so I feel like this. Okay, me just feeling like I gotta defend myself. I feel like most of the time it's against people that you love. Mm -hmm. I told you I got three sisters. Yeah. So me and Elle, we was right here. You know, we always got into our little petty stuff or whatever. So we always, she taught me how to fight for real, for real. Defending myself from her. Because finally I fought her ass back. Yeah. I'm like, fuck this. And then she was like, you can fight. And that's when I knew I could fight. Because I didn't know until she told me. I hopped out that motherfucker. She can tell you. So wait, this was recent. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> okay. I mean, I get it. Like, I got a sister, too. You know, siblings going through. You know how that go, but you aren't supposed to be doing that shit once you over 30. Or, like, even once you grown, like. Facts. I'm 31. Yeah. Fuck. I'm weak. They always going to try the young sister, though. Yeah, they are. You know they can be my ass for real, for real. <laughs> Like, let's not even do that. Let's not even. That's I learned all my moves from them. Like, it's like a combo. My mom, she got this elbow. She hit a bitch two times. This Damn. motherfucker fifth. Mm. Yeah, she grew up in Chicago, but, like, mm. me. I'm like, I do two of them, then I'm going to need you. Because she taught us the need too. And I got that from L. It's just little stuff. Okay. So I'm a karate kid. I'm going to fuck somebody <laughs> up. Okay. So who invented the term twerking or where did you hear it originally? Okay. From my knowledge, twerking used to mean like fucking. Am I tripping? Like, I swear to God, like, twerking used to mean fucking, like, I wasn't even born when they was using twerking, like, I'm for real, mm -hmm. for real. So, like, Pimp C, all them been saying twerking, like, Juicy J, they been saying twerking. This just was some shit. We created, like, four girls being in the room twerking in the group. We did not create twerking. I want to get that correct. We was the first girls in the group shaking that motherfucker, and we was called twerk team. So, that's the whole thing. Got you. Okay. But twerking was known for fucking, and we made twerking dancing. Got you. And then it used to be known like some drug dealing shit when niggas say they twerking numbers, like jugging, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, got you. So, okay, so who who was that that used to, you know, be twerking with you in the videos? Um, In the video, so when we first started off, people, we wasn't like as popping yet. Yeah. We was, but we wasn't. But in the She Got a Dunk video was me, L, ooh, Dre. Was Dre in the video? Dre, Lynn. Lynn was in the video. She was in the camera. Oh, shit. Well, it was five of us. It was Landry, Betty, and L, and me. And that's how we started off. But then we had Cola, too. 
Um, and that was like our sixth non-official member. But when we got popping, it was three of us, like touring, shaking ass, house parties. That was just three of us. Amazing. And we're going to get to the, that part of it, too. Okay, yeah. so who was recording the videos? Okay, so then we got Lynn. Lynn, that was like my best friend. It was my sister best friend first. I always took her best friends. I don't understand that. I don't feel like she knew how to treat people, so then I would adopt her best friends. Like they, I'd be like, come on, I got you. I know she's my sister. <laughs> That's how I used to be. So I always took her best friends. So, yeah, Lynn was my best friend, and her sister was Dree. So it was two sisters in, in the group because Lynn was a part of it. So she would record all the videos, and she was the voice. She would always say, twerking. Got you. Yep. Who idea was it to start this brand? Um, honestly, if you want to make it like a brand thing, then you're going to say my mom. My mom, like, was like, put it up, put up an email. And I'm like, what? Like, put up a number, put up an email. Because people was requesting to book us for house parties or like, um, not house parties, but like teen parties. You feel me? Let me make sure I correct that. So it was teen parties. We couldn't do, <laughs> we couldn't do certain <laughs> events yet. You yeah. feel me? Like, ain't nobody booking no fucking 16 year olds to come check their ass. Like, no, we was literally at teen parties. Um, and then once we got like, once I got like 17, 18, we started doing everywhere video shoots and shit. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so my cool. mom made it like more of a business, like, you know. Well, salute to your moms. I mean, so obviously she was cool with what y'all was doing. Um, to a sense. This is what I want to, like, make known about that. I feel like if we didn't have a momager in the industry, we would have, fuck it, I don't got a cap. We would have been slutted out because it was so many, like, as a female in the industry, every man, whether it's a manager or a rapper, I mean, you do a video shoot, nigga gonna try to talk to you. Like, if you the a nigga gonna try to talk at the video shoot to the baddest bitch there. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? If you the main role, y'all spending the most time together. The shit come down to shit like that. So it's like, my mom was always on all the shoots with me, every shoot I went to. Like, we never like lacked that, like having parents who advisory around. So I'm just happy that my mom was there and we had a momager. Cause I feel like it, people would have took more advantage of us. Like, Absolutely. especially like the male industry, it's dominated by males in the industry. It's not a lot of females. And they all like, yes, women. Wow, I mean, that's incredible. Okay, so when y'all was getting booked back then for like house parties and stuff, mm -hmm. how much was those bookings and like, what was the inquiries like? Okay, so like, <laughs> our first event, this shit cracked me up because I remember us traveling like to a fucking video shoot. I don't even remember where we had to go, but it was past Chicago. It was like, and we lived in Atlanta, but I just know we drove far and I'm like, what the fuck? And it was like, um, mm, we already even spent the money by the time we got it in our head. like. When we first started out, we was probably getting booked for like 1500 but that's like three people, then you paying the manager. What the fuck is that? You feel me? Yeah. So then once they got down to like, and then we got went up, me and L, we probably went up to like 3 k together, maybe at the most 3500 You feel me? Until I started doing my solo bookings, I ain't really experienced like a certain type of money. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. I'm going to book 5 k just by myself type shit. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so were you always a confident girl or did you get confidence doing what you was doing? Um, you know, I don't feel like you get confidence twerking because niggas gonna fuck. They gonna fuck a bitch who got one leg <laughs> and a half an arm. Like niggas gonna fuck anything. Like, so no, I don't feel like you get confidence from twerking. I feel like you get confidence from yourself. Like first a nigga can tell me pretty, I'm pretty, that don't mean nothing. Or a motherfucker can tell me I'm ugly. Everybody got their own preference. Like my confidence came from me just knowing who I am like within. Cause outside, if I was a guy, I mean, you got you got that little ass, you got that little, you know what I'm saying? You just want to fuck, like, off top. I don't feel like you look at people and be like, I want to get to know them. What, what's the last book she read? Like, nobody give a fuck about that. So you really got to know your worth as a person. And then you move around, you connect with people on different levels. And the person going to fuck with you off of you, you know? So just be authentic. And that's how I figured it out, just by, like, damn. I don't got to do too much. I, I can talk. Like, we can have a conversation. You feel me? Everything just don't got to be sexual. Absolutely. So. Um, your name mean it, and, and how did it come about? And you said you had a nickname within a nickname. Why? Um, mm, so I got Miss Turks on tatted on my back when I was like 16. <laughs> I got, tramp stamp? Yeah, I got the tramp set when I was like 16. My mom gave me the option. See, it should be sounding bad, but it's like, <laughs> she gave me the option to get Peaches or Miss Twerksome. And I'm like, I didn't know I was going to be Miss Twerksome, you feel me? But we was already popping, but I'm like, shit, I'm going to get Miss Twerksome. And you know if I'm in a video or something, I ain't seen it. You don't see that Miss Twerksome on got It ain't me. You feel me? Show. Sure. Sure. <laughs>
That's funny. That motherfucker fat on my back for real. Like, ain't no way I could bend this motherfucker over. You don't know who it is. For yeah. Real. Like, Let's be clear. It's official. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So monetizing what y'all was doing, did you realize like at that point you was an entrepreneur? Did you understand what that meant? Um, I always understood what an entrepreneur meant, but I feel like my sister had more of the business side. She always like edited the videos, always had more of the creative marketing ideas, but she was always the video editor and like stuff like that. Like we should record more. You know what I'm saying? Me, I don't be giving a fuck about recording. Like I really live this life outside the camera. Like people probably think I'm shaking ass right now. What are we doing? We doing the interview. Like I just, everybody just think I just shake ass, you feel me? But I don't get mad at that because that's the perspective that I put out for myself. So mm -hmm. as soon as I start showing more is when people see more. So she's the one who put that more like do behind the scenes show. That's when we start doing like day in the life of twerk team. Yeah. So Elle was always like that creative person when it came to that. I definitely was not that person. Being an entrepreneur always was in me because I never had a job. And when I did fill out for jobs, I fill out for like Brewsters, Kroger's. They ain't hiring young nigga. But good, I had this little ass on my back because shit got cracking. You feel me? 15, 16. I ain't never worked a job. I'm 31. Shit. I ain't never worked a job. What's never that? clocked in. They never hired me. Fuck it. Okay. I was bad fuck school. <laughs> um, okay, so which what, were y'all able to monetize on YouTube, though? Okay. So um, monetization is way, way, way different now. For sure. So I feel like people should be way, way uh, appreciative because mm -hmm. it was not worth a fucking penny then. Like, it was like a, a portion of a penny for a view. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it was not like that. We never really made money off that part of it at all. So people need to be thankful that, like, um, TikTok pay now. Um, YouTube pay way more than they used to pay. Yeah. So, no. We never really got money like that. We got checks, but they were small. You had two million views, you get like $200. You feel me? So, yeah. That's crazy. I feel like that that would be a misconception that people wouldn't even knew. I feel like I have way more money. But you got to think, most people, you don't really be, you have fame more than you have money at some point. You feel me? Like, you get mm -hmm. known before the money start coming in, you know? And I feel like this was, us, we was young, too. So we, like I told you, the money was already spent. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we already count shows, count money. We was just living fast and having fun. Like, we didn't give a fuck. We just didn't care. Like, we knew about, okay, pay this bill, do this. We had our bills paid. We was just living life. Like, I don't have no regrets. I'm going to be for real. Like, I'm blessed to even have experienced that part of YouTube without the payment. You feel me? Absolutely. Um. So at what point did you, did you be like, all right, let me figure out a way to, like, do other things with what I'm spending or, you know, what I'm making and just, you know, thinking like that. Oh, we always did that as okay. far as, like, hoodies and sweatshirts, shit like that. You got to understand that the brand is more than anything. Like, that's what really matters. It's like you really branding yourself, having something that people can actually obtain and have in their presence, whether it's a shirt, whether it's shorts, it don't even matter. Whether it's CD or water bottle, as long as you're selling something. So we always did that. That was never, like nothing we had to really think about shows was always coming in it was just more about not having not really we didn't give a fuck about the money like we just kept spending it as it came in we were spending it like mm -hmm. we didn't care about saving money we was just living the lifestyle of it you know for sure um another thing that i would say that i would credit you guys for doing is like helping break artists mm -hmm. you know um like you know dancing the soldier boy <laughs> don't booty meat shit like that um, like what, what made y'all choose the songs that y'all, you know, dance to? Shit. At some point in time, the labels start hitting us up to break artists' songs. So, like, I guess we start being a part of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want your song to be viewed and seen, like, labels was hitting us up to promote their artists' songs. So, shit. I, I don't really know how we really got into that. Like, we started with Soulja Boy. When he started, we started. You feel me? He actually got it done. We broke it at the same time. That's when we got known. That's when he got known. So I just feel like we just knew music. Like, no matter what we was doing, like, we just knew music. We always got hired, whether it was T-Pain or Polo to Don. Like, labels would always reach out for us to be in videos or just to break the song before it came out. You feel me? Absolutely. Y'all got paid for that, right? Yeah, for okay. sure. Okay, for sure. <laughs> Um, what was the first time, you know, your first experience meeting Soldier Boy? Like, assuming y'all... I ain't met Soldier Boy. Really? I, I am not one of them. Like, if I want to fuck with you, then I'm going to fuck with you. You feel me? Um, but I, we never met... I ain't never met Soldier Boy, um, personally, you know? He reached out to me on some, like, um, 
keep it up type shit. Like, he always been, like, motivating. <laughs> For real, like, strippers be coming at us like, take that shit off, bitch, little ass kids. And then, like, he'd be like, man, fuck them hoes. Y'all keep going. Shit like that. He used to hit us up. So, like, well, hit me up. So, no. Mm -mm. I never met him personally. I ain't want to link him. We want you to try and fuck. Not even on those shit like that. What was like, we gonna do? Make a routine? Maybe. Like I mean, I feel like at that time, Soldier Boy was so creative and innovative, and so was you guys. So I just. But I we just, all I, was young though. That's what you gotta understand. True. You feel me? Like everybody yeah. was young, and everybody had like their own, you know, little mm -hmm. management thing going on. And like I was just blessed that he made that song, and we danced to it, and everything just connected how it did. But like I always had respect for him for what he did. But no, we never like linked up, or we never knew him. Wow. Personally. Yeah. Got you. So it was pretty much it was the labels that reached out on his behalf for that song. The labels didn't reach out to for us to dance and she got it not. That shit was just popping. So y'all just like that song. We just yeah. <laughs> we was just teenagers in the basement. So Yeah, they did not reach out. I feel like Soldier Boy should definitely just cut y'all check just cause. Now nah, we good. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, so, so then think if he didn't make the song, then yeah. what song was we gonna talk to? Sure. And what song was we gonna pop off of? You feel me? Like, nah. I dig it. I yeah, mean, his success is his success. Mom. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what's your thoughts on the you know current rappers and artists of today? And I know that you're an artist, and we gonna get into that soon. But just want to clarify that. But what's your thoughts on the you know artists right now? Like from what take? What standpoint? Just just music wise, like you know, just just the sound sonically. Just I'm ratchet. That. I'm ratchet, and then I'm like soulful, and then I'm like all over the place. So it just depends on my mood. I respect all music, like. Music is an art, so sometimes you want to listen to some ratchet shit. Sometimes you want to listen to something that's going to make you cry. You feel me? So it's like, I love all music. I like where it's at right now. I feel like some people, like, motherfuckers starting to dance again. Shout yes. out to Sexy Red. Yes, like, sexy. You feel me? So I feel like music is in a good place. I see more girls coming together. You see the female tour that's about to happen with Tink and, like, yeah. Janae Aiko and shit. That shit fire. That shit hard. Like, I like Megan it. Glorilla. Shout out to Nikki. She the GOAT. Shout out to all the females. You feel me? I feel like we should come together more. I don't feel like it should be all that. Like, respect people's positions and let that be what it is. Not to say you want Thrive Pass that it be better than them. Just to say respect what they already laid out, their foundation. For sure. I'm with you. Um, have you met Sexy Ray yet? We follow each other. We just cool as hell. Like, I feel like we already friends. Type shit. We don't even got to meet each other. I was gonna say, I'm surprised you went in that Get a Sexy video. Yeah, I ain't even, I fuck with her so hard, but I was fucking with her before she really start, you know, popping, so. I did that. Yeah. I did that. I like her shit. I like that she authentic. I feel me like too. people too. try to be in that lane, but they ain't really, they ain't really popping that coochie like that. You feel me? She really popping that shit. For sure. I, I feel like you can just, you can just tell, like, su or not Suki, but sexy. I feel like it's just authentic. It is, because I feel like Suki like a wife. Suki like a. Uh, really a housewife and she want that that's just like more like her alter ego yeah. but i feel like sexy red is sexy red that's just her yeah. i agree um what's your thoughts on things like only fans those type of platforms shit do what you gonna do but watch my shoes that shit don't got nothing to do with me you want to play with that little cat <laughs> you play with that little cat you don't want to don't do it i i don't look down on people or nothing about it i got only fans uh link in bio you feel me shit do what you do what you be doing on your OnlyFans? Whatever I want to. Link in bio. Okay, period. <laughs> <laughs> now, for real, I used to call that shit like a topless titty bar and shit. But honestly, like, I know I'm going to at least have one kid. Like, I ain't that selfish, so shit. It's certain shit I just can't do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just okay. can't do it. So, I ain't really letting that me out pop out like that. I ain't playing with no toys or nothing. You feel me? I'm like a fantasy. Mm. You feel me? I'm, I'm really a fantasy, so. Yeah, it's some shit I want to do because morally I just can't do it yet because I ain't had no fucking badass kids yet. I dig it. That's it. That's all. Speaking of kids, like, what's your thoughts seeing, like, little girls, you know, twerking and dancing on social media? Like, I don't know if you seen that one video. They was, it was, uh, it looked like little girls was at a birthday party and they was dancing to Sexy Red. Well, I feel like you should control what your kids listen to because, shit, if anybody hear that beat, they're going to do what they do. <laughs> Straight up. I feel like it's more of the parents. You feel me? Like, when I'm in that car, I know they be sick of me. Like, I'm playing motherfucking ABC shit. I don't give a fuck. Bitch. You gonna listen to this. Bitch, I ain't get taught Spanish, bitch. You gonna learn Spanish. You feel me? Like, it should be, it should be like that. You should want them to gain knowledge. Like, I'm not really into that, but that ain't my child. You feel me? So I don't really have no parental advisory over what they do. 
I did that. Parental advisory. They got to move how they move. For sure. Um, so let's talk about career transitions. Mm -hmm. um, now you was you was doing the fitness lane too, right? Yeah, I used to be a personal trainer. I was doing that shit for free too. It's like I was known. I got into personal training, and then people used to come and try to give me their last two fifty. I'm like, how you gonna eat? Like, <laughs> you can't be a good person to try to run a business. That's why I don't want to know you, nigga. I don't need to know you. Cut that check. The fuck. I ain't trying to build no personal relationship because I'm sap as fuck. I used to be telling them, how are you going to eat this week? Bitch, I don't give a fuck. I just worked you out, bitch. Look at that. Look at your waist, bitch. But yeah, I didn't care. Like, I didn't care about the money at that time. Like, it's like, even now with the workout shit, um, I got my instant sweat stuff popping. Um, it's waist, waist trainers, thigh racers, stuff like that. But, you know, all the bitches got that out. I really work out without, without any surgery and shit. You feel me? So... That's I'm cool. just trying to put that out for the girls. Like, y'all, you can still look good without getting no surgery. If you want to, and if you do got surgery, put this shit on, and you still got to keep that right. I feel like girls will understand you still got to maintain your surgery after. So I got the sweat enhancement, then I got the wraps for the girls. I agree. And the guys, too. Okay, cool. I agree. What's, what's some tips for, you know, just a healthy lifestyle that you would give to females? Um, Honestly, I'm toxic. I just stopped being toxic. Shit, this is my second week of not being toxic. Um, so I'm really graduating from some some shit. You know, like I've been engaged and shit, like, uh, oh, some shit I'ma get y'all. Just just ask me one more time. So like <laughs> ask me one more time because I really want to answer this the right way. For sure. Okay. I'm with the shit. Give us three healthy habits for women, like whether they had a BBL surgery or or haven't. Okay, so the first thing is discipline. Whether you want to do it or not, just get up. I promise once you get up and start working out, you have to work out. Whether I don't give a fuck how long it is. But you can do a five-minute workout as long as you do something towards the day for yourself. The second thing is how you eat. Like, I used to love motherfucking Hennessy or Douce and soda. I don't even drink that shit no more. So it's like once a week, that's cool. But every day drinking, cut that shit out. Uh, the third thing I would say is not, not making excuses. Um... That's the main thing. But I feel like that's what anything you do. Eating and working out is the main part of it and staying consistent. But you can't just work out of two weeks, get your results, and don't work out. Because you're going to feel like a, like so trifling when you get back to working out. So just stay consistent. And that's the main thing. Respect. Um, so talk about the you know transition to becoming an artist. Because the thing is, though, if people didn't know, you was freestyling back then. So. Yeah, we was rapping. Yeah. We were singing a little bit. Um, I feel like the transition is me taking it serious. Like, you got to show people that you take it serious. You that feel part. me? And then I let the music speak for itself. Like, I ain't putting out no trash music. And I feel like since I don't rap, I sing that people, like, they vibe with it more. It's, it's like, more unexpected. You know what I'm saying? Than just coming out rapping. I agree. I like that different song. I think it's a vibe. Thank you. I, like I appreciate it. Um, what's the significance of your name being Saturday? Um, I so I'm like an R&B girl. I listen to like the weekend, uh, mm -hmm. party next door. Like I'm into that. So, but when the name was created, it was like what's like the favorite day of the week type shit. Like, if if I could pick one, I would be Saturday. It would be Saturday because Sunday I can rest. You feel me? Friday, you be chilling going into the weekend. You know what I'm saying? So if every if I could pick a day out the week to be like every day, it'd be Saturday. It's just a vibe. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, talk about smoking and being a singer. Do you get criticism for that or? Shit, I be running out of breath. My vocal coach be like, I think he know I smoke, but I ain't tell him. But mm -hmm. I, like, he trains <laughs> my second time going to vocal coach. I, was, I said, fuck that. I'm going to drink tea. I ain't going to smoke before I go. Like, I did it totally different this time. But you can tell by, like, how you breathe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a difference, but. It's not, singing don't come from your breath, if that makes sense. It comes from your head, which is what I've had to learn mm. throughout me having vocal lessons. Like, and then I got to smile every time I sing. So, yeah, it's more about that. It's not really my breathing. Okay. Right. I'm going to so try I'm that good. the next time I'm in, the, I'm in the shower then. You got to. I'm gonna try to. Just smile. Try. You got to do the corniest smile. Like. <laughs> I'm going to try it. I'm you got to do go. some corny shit. It's going to come out good as fuck. For sure. Um, do you think it's difficult, you know, trying to, take a, a different career path from people already know you from one thing like do you feel like people try to put you in a box yeah i feel like people been wanting me to do porn or strip or like you know going to that route because i feel like when you sexualize yourself that's just what they already think like okay this step one step you know what i'm saying like yeah. they want it to be more like a build-up but me knowing who i was coming into the industry i already knew man i'm about to make them up a cat 
I'm about to got um, do what I want to do and make my money at the same time and not feel any type of way about what people got to say. Because most people, like, majority of people, once I looked up the statistics and how much people make, you know how much people make, like, yearly? The average. The average person. What is it now? I, I mean, like, is it like 45? I was going to say 50. Yeah, it's like 45 to 50,000. Mm-hmm. Um, so w- with that just being said, I just got to be thankful. Like, I'm not, I'm not about to, like, feel bad about me not clocking into a job, you feel me? Because most people spend more time at a job than they do what they actually believe in and what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? So no, I'm not working to live. I'm not doing that. It's not happening. But I respect people who do do it, but I feel like at some point in time, you got to understand, like, this is for now. What's next? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That schedule, like, okay, Saturday, I'm going to get drunk. What? Sunday, I'm going to rest. Then Monday, I'm going to do the same thing over and over again. No, that's not how God wanted your life to be. You feel me? But you got to also understand everybody got the same 24 hours in a day. You got to push yourself a little bit more. Maybe wake up an hour before you was waking up and read or or, um, get some knowledge about something that you really want to do. You feel me? And every day, just jot down them notes and just start applying yourself. You feel me? Because we all can make time to really do what we want to do. Like, it's, it's no excuses with that. But not knowing that you got that potential in yourself, like, that's that's something that you got to have people around you to either enlighten you on or shit. You can leave somebody to the water, that don't mean they're going to drink it. So it, it might not happen. You feel me? That's facts. And also, too, I, I strongly believe that everybody does not have a passion. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if you don't have a passion, then... It's okay to, you know, just... That's, that is okay, but people make it like it's a problem to yeah. just be yourself. Right. You feel me? I like, think. you okay with working a nine to five? Be okay with working a nine to five. Yeah. But don't don't let society make you feel bad for having a job. My homeboy called me. He was like, man, P, I got a job. I'm like, congratulations. <laughs> Nigga, now you don't got to go run errands and shit. Like, what the fuck? Like, congrats. He thought I was going to... Like, down him, and I feel like Mm -hmm. that's nothing but society and how women in Mm -hmm. general, like, I feel like women, but, you know, it's a man thing, too, but I feel like women look down on men who, like, have nine-to-fives. You know what I'm saying? Especially nowadays. Right, nowadays. Yeah. So keep working. Keep working, black man. Do not let nobody discourage you from having a nine-to-five. Keep going hard. You'll still get that dick sucked. Do that again? Okay, period. I just (laughs) learned that. You said you just learned that? I just learned that. Okay, so... Was it from the bay that you was engaged to, or? Um, you know, no. I don't even want to talk about it. Okay, so that situation was some crazy shit. That was like, I was watching um, Life After Lockup. I love that show. Oh, I love it. So then I ended up getting into a situation like that. You feel me? You did? Yeah. Wait, I did it. Wait, okay, wait, 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 wait. All right, all right. Did he reach out to you, reach out to him? Okay, why? he's this fine-ass nigga, and I'm like, man, I think your baby, Um, I think, like, we knew his baby mama type shit, like, you know, she was, like, around. She was, like, a known little popping little female. And so she was cool. We went friends and then, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, he fine as fuck, like, you feel me? But he couldn't have been shit because he ain't, he ain't white for her or, like, back her, but maybe they just went in for each other, you know what I'm saying, type shit. So I'm like, shit, he got to get fucked. I told my sister... This was the real story. I told my sister, shit, you gonna fuck him or I'm gonna fuck him. And then it's just like, because he was just that fine. And I know some people like, what? But that's really what happened. I'm like, he's fine. He gotta get hit. Because I think this little bitch fucking, was fucking your baby daddy. You feel me? Mm. So, but but the girl never really confessed to like fucking the baby daddy, but I knew the bitch was. So I'm like, we gonna fuck her baby daddy. <laughs> So one of us got to choose. So I slid in his DM. Period. Long time after that shit happened. Because okay. we was over there. That was just some petty shit we just said. <laughs> <laughs> Did happen, y'all. A little story. Ah, all right, boom. But down the line, I ended up seeing him at Smoothie King. He was tall. He was fine as fuck. Boom. Hit him up. Slid in his DM, right? We start talking. We start liking each other. Whole time niggas in jail. So, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. There you go. You said you seen him at Smoothie King. Seen him at Smoothie King. Woo de woo woo. You gotta fast forward. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 three little six months. Okay. Okay. Nigga. Locked up. And one with him. So yeah, we was we was like talking. He was already locked up. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We talking. And then I'm like, I like him. But it ain't like I served his time with him. I think that's what a lot of people didn't understand. Like we was talking and stuff, but he was talking to hella bitches, I'm pretty for sure. We was gonna know each other. Like he I'm pretty sure he had connections with females before. You know what I'm saying? He actually touched, fucked, felt, you know? Yeah. He was just me, me on on the internet. He knew I was who I was, like how I knew who he was, but we didn't know each other, like for real. So when he got out, we was together. And then we got engaged like three weeks later. 
Okay, period. I mean, was it love at first, second sight? <laughs> I was just ready to do it. Like, you know how the show is. You know how it is. Yeah. You know, they, they be ready to find, like, a forest or something. But I ain't gonna lie. I knew that shit wasn't gonna work out. You know, we watched the show, like. Yeah. I knew that shit wasn't gonna work out. We should have just been friends and then, you know, built something over time. That shit was not gonna work. But shout out to him, though. I wish him the best. Um, you know. Are you single now? Are you in a relationship? I'm single. I haven't, I told you I haven't been toxic for two weeks. <laughs> so this is my second week. Like, I thought it was three weeks, but this is really my second week. And, like, I just, I'm not fucking with nobody. I ain't fucking with nobody's son right now. Do you just like men or you like women too? I only like men. I never really got into the cooter. Never got into the cooter. I just never really, girls just like, I don't know. I don't feel like they clean like that. <laughs> Okay. They're attractive. Like, <laughs> girls be attractive. Like, just like young niggas be attractive. Mm. But, like, I don't think n the young guys clean like that. Like, you was just 17, like, three, four years ago. Like, that shit. I don't deal with younger guys or them little cooters. Like, get that little cooter on. But, you know, I be having to tell girls, mm mm. They be trying to. I was just about to say, I know girls probably try you out. Yeah, because I got, like, that energy. I got, yeah. I got the energy. But it's like, no, girl, please. <laughs> like, I need this little cat tore up. I'm trying to get my coochie stretched, like, for real. Like, I like them mandingos, anacondas, pythons. Please. Period. You I'm like correct. what you like. I'm correct. Okay, and I got to ask you, so is it true that you dated Finesse two times? Um, I feel like that time on, I think I said that, but I think, I don't know what happened when I did say that. Um, <laughs> I think... I think we had me and him talk. Um, it's not my regret. Let me just start off with saying that. I regret dating you. I hate that I ever dated you. I hate it. That was the first fat bitch I ever dated. You hear me? And I was fucking with him so hard because I'm thinking it was just me and him. You feel me? And my ex fiance be like, you dated that fat rat bitch. And I'd be like, ah! He can call me all the time for that. It's like, what you doing? It's like, ain't hey, that you can say. Like, because I was really fucking with Shorty, like, for real, for real. Like, we was really, like. And then I found out he had a girl. But, shit, I don't know. She was at the house. You know, we was on the road. And I'm just like, girl, bye. My nigga can never be on the road two weeks, and I ain't right there. You feel me? But she got, like, ten kids, so that's probably why. But at the end of the day, that situation was a mistake. Take that off my list. Take that. This, nigga, this a credit alert, nigga. Take them off my credit right now. That nigga did not deserve to be around at all. Uh, yeah, I fucked that fat bitch. Was it when he had the hair or the haircut? This was like when he first got up. With the hair. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. This is before you got his teeth done. Oh, damn, the humble. You ain't shit. That's and how y'all know I'm a genuine person. You are genuine. That's how you know I wait day for nothing else. Like, besides, you know. Like, he was kicking That's shit fine. like it was just me and him. Any nigga who think that I'm going to fuck with them when they got hella bitches, and I'll go back to my ex-fiance. Y'all got me fucked up. I never fuck with you niggas. Like, what? Y'all think y'all deserve that and my ex nigga don't? No. Like, if that's the case, i will just be with my ex. Like, no, I would never be with somebody who want multiple females. And you fat. Like, my ex, he can walk away in his butt. Like, it's nice. You know what I'm saying? My mom and them, I talked to them one time on the phone. They going to say, I bet you ain't never looked at them when you walked away. <laughs> then I looked at him one time when he walked away and he had all them dimples in his butt. <laughs> he had so many dimples in his butt. He had so much cellulite. I felt nasty. <laughs> and I wanted to go take a bath. I am fucking hollering. <laughs> so, okay, is cheating is the ultimate deal breaker for you? Like, um, Honestly, okay, let's be for real. Now, I just heard some shit that uh, Nene Leak said, what you, what you don't know won't hurt you. Type I agree. Shit. You feel I me? agree with that. It used to be respect back in the day. That's why our grandparents and shit was still married. The fuck is you talking about? Like, I, I agree. I ain't know about that shit. So if I don't know, huh, it ain't going to show. We going to be strong. <laughs> you feel me? But don't motherfucking play with me. Like, I do not play like that. I'm not swapping pH. I'm not doing none of that. I don't like sharing. No. I'm I feel good. you. And I think, again, you moving real sloppy if I find out that you cheat. And that's what I think. Be respectful. Be respectful. Yeah, be respectful. Facts. Facts. Um, so our keyword is progress. This is mm -hmm. the progress support. Um, so what does our keyword mean to you? Um, progress to me means like, okay, so it would be like a, I look at it like schooling. Like, so today, right? Have, have I made progress within my day? That's how I look at it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Today I have been productive. That's like, 
you being productive, you making the most out of your 24 hours. That's how I look at progress. Because you sitting down, watching interviews. You know, I watch interviews and shit. That's why I'm talking to myself real quick. Wow, YouTube all day and watching Netflix and shit, that's not going to get you to where you need to be at. You feel me? Get up, work out, and really just go towards your goals. So progress to me is like really just doing what you're supposed to be doing and being productive and applying yourself daily. For sure, for sure, for sure. I love it. Um, last question. What's your message to your day one fans? Day one fans, always be yourself. Stay down, stay loyal to you. Um, and do, some, do something that's going to make you happy. Like, you don't want to leave this world and not being known for what you really want to be known for. You feel me? Like, step out the box. Don't be scared to have that leap of faith. For sure. And make sure y'all stream difference. And um, tune in on Saturday. Anything I'm dropping, I'm going to make sure it's quality and it sound good to where y'all feel it. Absolutely. Well, nah, this was dope. I can't wait for you to come back. <laughs> um, and, you know, keep working. I'd love to see it. I appreciate y'all so much. For real, for real. Thank you. For sure. The Progress Report.